Do you want to minimize energy loss and boost safety in your solar setup? Let's dive into how to choose the right wires for your solar panels. In this video I will talk about the essential formulas you need to calculate wire thickness from a single panel to more complicated hybrid solar panel systems. Let's quickly recap how solar panel wiring works. You have your solar panels as a main electricity generation. This goes to a charge controller. If you have panels in parallel, then there is a combiner box in between. The difficult part is sizing the wires for the distance between the panels and the charge controller. We have to recap some essential knowledge first. When you connect solar panels in series, the voltages of each panel add up, but the current remains the same as a single panel. This setup is ideal for increasing the system voltage. I recommend to always wire in series up to the maximum allowable input voltage of the charge controller. Then use parallel connections if you have more panels. With parallel connections, it's the current from each panel that adds up, while the voltage stays the same as one panel. Opt for parallel wiring if your setup faces shading, or if you're using a PWM charge controller, which requires the panel voltage to match the battery voltage. Stick with me, because after this simple calculation, we will look at a more complicated 2 series 2 parallel wiring diagram. Let's start with the basic of wire sizing by considering two key factors, the current and the length of the wire. Imagine you have a single 100 watt solar panel and the distance to the charge controller is 30 feet or 9 meters. We will use this 100 watt solar panel as an example. The first step is to calculate the maximum current. We look at the panel's short circuit current or ISC. For this panel it's 5.21 amps. We apply a safety factor of 1.56 to account for outdoor conditions. This factor is derived from multiplying the standard 125% safety margin by another 125%. So our calculation for the maximum current or IMAX through the wire is 5.21 amps times 1.56 equals 8.13 amps. This is the highest possible current that will flow through the wire. The second step is to use a voltage drop calculator. Remember the length to the charge controller is 30 feet or 9 meters? Let's use an online voltage drop calculator. I will post the link in the description. We need to fill in all the details first. Let's start with a 10 gauge wire and use the given length of 30 feet. Then select DC and use the VMP of the solar panel with the calculated maximum current. Click on calculate and we can see a voltage drop of 2.38%. This is under 3%, so a 10 gauge wire is ok. If the voltage drop is over 3%, then we need to increase the wire diameter to 8 gauge or reduce the length of the wire. Solar cables typically come in 5 or 10 foot increments. It's best to cut them to the exact length needed, as coiled excess cable can increase voltage drop and affect efficiency. For efficiency and cost savings, position the charge controller close to the battery. This minimizes energy loss by reducing the need for thicker, more expensive wiring due to the lower voltage and higher current in these cables. Are you confused about solar power? Check the first link in the description for 7 free solar diagrams, which will help you make your own system, including wire and fuse sizes. Let's dive into a more complex scenario, configuring two solar panels in series and then in parallel, which calls for a combiner box. This is called a 2S2P system. The combiner box should be placed as close to the panels as possible. These are the specifications for the solar panel we will be using. Step 1. Calculating voltage and current for the series connection. For panels in series, voltages add up. So two panels with a VMP of 20.4 volts each gives us 40.8 volts in total. The current remains the same in series, but we apply our safety factor of 1.56. Thus, for panels with a short circuit current of 5.21 amps, the adjusted current is 8.12 amps. 
step two, wire sizing to combiner box. With this amount of solar panels, you won't have a big solar array. So you can use the existing leads attached to the solar panel to bridge the distance to the combiner box. However, if you have a larger array, you most likely need to run solar extension cables to the combiner box. You would then need to calculate the voltage drop to the combiner box too. Step 3. Combining two series strings in parallel. In parallel, current adds up. So for two strings, the current in the combiner box is doubled. This is the formula to calculate the current when the two series strings are combined. We get a total of 16.25 amps. For a 50 foot run from the combiner box to the charge controller, we would need an 8 gauge or 10 mm square wire as you can see in the following voltage drop calculation. However, 8 gauge wire is costly, coming in at $90. To reduce expenses, consider adding another panel for a 3S 2P configuration. That is one more panel in series per string. This increases the voltage of the series string to 61.2 volts, allowing a smaller, more affordable 10 gauge wire which now costs $76. This exemplifies why more panels in series can be cost effective by reducing voltage drop and wire costs. Just ensure the total voltage doesn't exceed your charge controller input limit. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribe for more videos like this. And watch these videos next.